hey there everyone. Another beautiful day here in South Central Alaska. My name's Pete and welcome to what will soon be our small farm. In this first video, I want to introduce myself, tell you a bit about what we're doing here and what this channel will be about. Then I'll show you around, I'll explain what we started with, show you what we've done so far and what the plans are for the future. Ah, much better. Let's go. So first I want to tell you a little bit about what this channel is going to be and what kind of content you can expect from it. Here I want to take you alongside us as we take this rocky field and turn it into a lush, beautiful, organic market garden where we will learn how to grow different crop varieties, raise some livestock, and even figure out the business side of it, how to sell vegetables and make a profit. And I want to bring you along as we do each of the different projects and, and build the different features of this farm as we learn how to do it ourselves and I'll explain what I'm doing and why and we'll compare some different things we'll try different methods of of things and compare how they worked and take notes and we'll integrate that into our our process for the the future years so what's going to make this channel unique for better or for worse is that we have no experience in doing any of this We've never even been to uh, an organic vegetable farm like what we hope to start here, much less taking part in managing or operating one. So you might be wondering why would we make a YouTube channel and videos on something we've never done, with, done before, we have no experience with. And it's because our journey so far over the past couple years has been extremely fun and rewarding as far as just what we've been able to learn about how to achieve things. We, there's been so many things that have arisen that we've never expected to deal with or knew how to deal with or planned on ever having to do and you learn how to figure stuff out as you go and that's, a, that's the most important skill to have if you're gonna move into a lifestyle such as this where you have to be the electrician, the plumber, the builder, the landscaper. You have to know how every little part of it works. Otherwise, you're going to be relying on other people and you're going to be, your comfort is going to be at their convenience and you're going to be waiting around for other people and paying a lot of money for other people to do possibly very simple things for you. Aside from three raised garden beds at our previous home, we've never even had a large garden space and so we want to take you alongside us as we go through the process of gaining experience and learning how to do something very fulfilling such as this. This is going to benefit our family in many many ways even if the business fails in a couple of years as long as it's covered some of the costs that have gone into it I consider that a win because now our family has a huge garden where we can grow all of our food and getting it to pay for itself is just a bonus and then making even a living on top of that where we can not have to leave home every day to to go provide for our family is is another bonus i know it can be wonderful to watch a video on youtube where an expert shows you how they professionally do something but what you don't get from those videos is all of the trial and error that went into them getting their system that works flawlessly every time and that trial and error is what where knowledge and wisdom comes from. It's knowing all of the things that have caused failure in the past for you and avoiding them. The hope is that by sharing this journey with others and starting from scratch and building everything as we go and learning along the way that it'll inspire you to make a change and do something, follow your dreams if you wish to, to make that sustainable lifestyle change to to start building something for your family and your future because it's a it can be quite overwhelming to have this big daunting unknown task in front of you that seems like a mountain to climb but you have to start the journey you have to start today you can start planning and preparing and doing things along the way and that's what I also hope to share is just some of the 
the insights that I've gained along the ways or things that would have been nice to have known before we started. Uh, we both love fresh fruits and vegetables and the pride that comes along with growing higher quality produce than you can find in the stores. The problem for us has always been the, the amount of time and effort that goes into managing a garden, especially if you only work in it on the weekends or, you know, whenever you have some spare time. Uh, you often, things go to spoil and bolt and weeds take over and it can be frustrating to put in all the, the time preparing the beds and planting and and watering only to have it all kind of fall apart in the last few weeks because you had other stuff going on or you missed the opportunity to harvest everything and now, now the tomatoes are soft. So I understand it might not make sense then, why are we why are we taking something which can be overwhelming on the small scale and scaling it up bigger and hoping it will work? And it's because I'm trying to approach this problem in a different way. I reached this solution by deciding that if I wanted our family to have fresh, high quality, organic produce for most of the year for an extremely low cost, the best way to do that was to start a business which produced high quality organic produce most of the year. And by doing that, we can have the business build the infrastructure for us. And after the infrastructure is paid for, we can then decide to continue the business if it's profitable or get out of it. And we still end up with a huge resource for our homestead. So that's how I'm viewing this. I'm viewing it as a business investment, but I'm also have zero f fear of the business failing because worst case scenario, and we're still left with a beautiful, large garden that we, we built a, the infrastructure for and automated. So I see it as a very low, low risk investment. And also if it starts to generate a profit, we can justify spending more time here. Um, so for this first season, we plan on this being a, a very part-time thing. Only when we have some spare time, we'll, we'll work in the garden and we're, we're going to do a lot of experimenting this year and just figuring out how to grow and what to grow and sprinkler settings and how to irrigate, what the, what the frequency of the irrigation should be, how to protect from the hot and the sun and when, what part of the fall gets too cold for plants and when we have to put crop protection on. Uh, we just hope to learn, go through that whole experience this year, and then next year, we'll try to try to produce some some product when, uh, and turn some profits, or at least start to to see some return on our investment. So I'll start. I should mention, see, we don't own this this barn here. This this pink flag is where our property line is. I was gonna put fence posts down the property line, but I may not do that now that we're gonna buy this this neighboring half, although I may still do it just to divide it up more. In case we get bigger livestock at some point, we can let them graze in sections and rotate those sections through as the, the seasons progress. We've got a 500 gallon water tank in the back. The irrigation setup will be in the back along that back fence long term. Just for now, this first season when we're starting out with just these three beds here, we're gonna have the, the water system right there. But eventually I'll move the filter and the pump and everything back by the big tank. And that insulation I got on a good deal. The, uh, there was a construction contractor in Anchorage who was rebuilding part of a high school and all that concrete was, all that insulation was under the concrete that they tore out. And I think I paid $40 for all of that. So part of what we're gonna do with that insulation is we're gonna, it's gonna go into our, our greenhouse concept here that we're building. It's gonna be a, I forget what they call it, a, a climate battery greenhouse design is one of the common names for it where we'll have tubing which we pump air in during that day and at night. So we'll pop, pump the hot air from up in the top of the greenhouse down through the rocks, three feet down under the garden beds. 
and that's going to warm up the soil and it'll take the humidity and moisture out of it and keep the soil moist. And then at night when it cools down, we're going to run air through those tubes again, which are now warmed from the daytime, and we're going to keep the temperature warm at night when it cools down outside. That's the theory anyway, so we're going to try that here on a small scale. This will be a 6 by 16 or 20, I haven't decided yet. And if that works out well, we'll build a big version of it back here. I think maybe 20 by 30 or longer probably. These were two beds that I had built last summer. Basically I lined them out with uh, some, some rotten logs from the forest and then took even more rotten wood and filled it down in the middle. And then I brought in a bunch of topsoil that I collected from the property and then a pickup load of horse manure from a lady that boards horses nearby and spread the manure out on top and then I covered it with a um, blend of like field peas and uh, wheat and different grasses and uh, a clover and so that did and then I covered all that in wood chips as a mulch and that grew really well last summer and I just let it die. I cut, I cut it down a couple of times throughout the summer and I just let it all fall in place and die. And so then this summer I've been taking out the, the composted wood chips and you can see all the rotting wood that's in here. Um, I think if I would have less, left this one more season it really would have broken down nicely. I've been mixing this in one wagon load of this with one wagon load of topsoil. Screen for rocks. And we'll go over here to the barn. And we've got the rabbits. And the chickens. these animals from a neighbor. They needed a good home. And so we decided to give them a good home. We get we have two egg laying chickens here and then one Cornish cross that's that was never harvested. I think it's about a year old and uh, it needed a home and so we've we've got a pet now. We, we're happy to have them now because we got 30 some chickens coming in a couple of weeks and so it was good to have these for a month and, and just just get the get the feel for how they how they act what they need Oof. yuck yeah that's what they do and uh and we got two rabbits too they were from the same same person they just they needed a home um they do produce some manure you know but they're uh mostly a pet so on the agenda this summer, we want to get this all cleared out, reclaim the fence. There's a, we have to fix the fence in the back. The moose has been coming over it in the winter. So we definitely have to stop that. And uh, yeah, start to reclaim it. But... So thanks for joining us and follow along. If this sounds interesting to you, you want to see this journey. Uh, we are sure excited about it and we're glad to have you along with it.